everybody. If you'd like to know how to make this really, really pretty spiral pendant with a mica shift window in it, then just stick around and keep watching. We'd like to show you how. Okay, everybody, to make this pendant, you're going to need some polymer clay in the colors of purple pearl, which is uh, the mica powder. You, can, you have to use a mica powder uh, infused purple. So the Primo Accents makes a really good purple pearl. And you need another color called, it's really like a charcoal gray. I use this, this is called graphite pearl. And it's a really nice charcoal color. If you don't have this color, you can mix three parts of black with one part of silver clay to achieve that color. And you'll also need some silver clay as well, some plain silver clay. You're going to need some cutters. Uh, this is a two inch cutter. This is a one inch cutter, circle cutter, and this is a three quarter inch cutter. And you're going to need some, a duo toned mica powder. This is called blue green. And for this particular project, you want to have the blue green to go with the purple. And you may need a rolling pin, of course, and a blade. You're going to need some sanding discs. I'm using 320, 800, 1000, 3000, and 10,000. And maybe some UV resin or some resin of your choice or a glaze, whichever you choose to use. And you will need a bale as well. You can either make your bale, but in this case we are just using a bale that's already made that we we attach to the pendant. So it's up to you on, on how creative you want to get with that. But for the purposes of this project, we're just using one that's already made. So basically these are the things that you're going to need. And also for the purple pearl, you're going to need a mica shift on that purple pearl in order to use it in this project. I do have another video on how to do mica shift if you don't know, so you might want to watch that video first before going on with this, and then you can create your mica shift sheet. With this, you're only going to need a one inch circle of this mica shift, so you don't need a real big piece of it. You could just use like one bar maybe and and go ahead and create your mica shift from that. And if you don't have these colors and you want to make it in a different color scheme, that's up to you. That's fine as well. Just remember with the mica shift that you're going to have to use a mica infused clay or a metallic clay. So this is basically what you need and maybe some texture to texturize the back of your pendant. And other than that, that's about it. So let's get started. Oh, and one last thing you're going to need is an extruder like this one. Unless you want to roll your clay out by hand, you're gonna need a circle shape and you want that shape to be pretty small. You want it to be about a 1 8 inch. And I'm just getting mine out of here. I can get the right one. You don't want the smallest one, but you want like the next one up. Okay, pretty small. This is the size that I've chosen. You're going to fill up your extruder, condition your silver mixed clay, what I told you to, when I told you to mix the black with the silver, or your graphite pearl clay, whichever you're using condition it and get it ready for use. And then what you're gonna do is, I have some right here already conditioned and ready to go into the extruder. So once you get your extruder all the way back, you just, if you haven't used an extruder before, you just go ahead and insert the clay in there. And I kind of press it in there until I can't press it anymore, until it's nice and full and then I break it off. And make sure it's not hanging over the sides or anything like that. And once you get it in there, you can just place your extruder disc into the end of this piece here and screw that on. And then you can start extruding after that, once it's on there. And all you basically do is wind the handle. On mine, it's clockwise. And you just extrude it out. And I just go till it's all the way out and it stops. 
The only thing I'm going to do is on the inside here, I'm going to cut this portion here so that it's on an angle so I can roll it up nicely. So I'm just going to cut this on an angle like that so that it's, I don't know if you can see that, but it's on an angle sort of. Okay, it's not straight across like this one is. This is straight across. Okay. So then you're going to roll out your silver clay and you're going to roll it into a three by three square and you're going to place that on the table and you want to roll that out on number three on your pasta machine and then what you're going to do is you're going to take your your string clay here and you're going to gently form it into and i'll cl come closer up so you can see okay you're going to form this into a little like that, spin it around, and you're going to begin um, spinning it around itself, and when you get it to be large enough, then you're just going to place it on the center of, or around the center of this piece of clay, and you can continue wrapping. You don't want to break the clay, so be very gentle with it. And you just continue wrapping around into a circle. Until it's filled up the three inch square. And then what you're gonna do, and we're almost there actually, the larger it gets, the quicker you're almost done. Then, I'm going to make sure they're nice and even. You don't have any spaces between them. And I probably got one more time around here, maybe two. And it pretty much uses up the whole... circle of it. Don't worry about the end of it because that's not going to matter. So now you have this giant twirly circle here. Okay, so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your cutter that's a little smaller than the one inch cutter and you're going to take the two inch cutter. And what you're going to do is you're going to take this small cutter first and you're going to go right to the center of this and you want to make sure you're in the center of it and you're going to just cut out this center all the way to the bottom like that but then you're going to take this and you're going to go off center a little bit this two inch cutter okay and but you yet yeah, you still want it in the middle and then as soon as you get that right where you're going to have it and you cut that out and then once you cut that out Okay. Then you can gently remove it from the center here. And then you should have something that looks more like this. Okay, so once you've done that, the next thing you're going to do is take your blue-green mica powder. And you want to be pretty generous and you want to paint this with the blue green and you really want to get into those the main part is to get it into the corners and into the grooves that's super important with this project and I don't know why but I'm always really messy when I use mica powder which is why I'm trying to keep it on this square but sometimes I'm just incapable of doing that it's probably the kind of brush I'm using too um, you want to make sure you get in the center of this and turn that the blue-green color.
and around the sides of it. But just make sure that you're really getting in those grooves. That's the most important thing. And on the inside. And weirdest thing, you guys, I have used this mica powder before and I have never had this happen, but against the white surface that I'm working on. I don't know if you can see it, but there's like a bluish tinge here. I could not get it off. I tried alcohol cleaner. I tried nail polish remover and it still wasn't coming off. So take care with that blue green. But I've never seen it to where you can't wipe off mica powder. But anyways, so once you've done that and you've gotten the mica powder covered, covering it very well, then you want to take whatever you use to dome your beads. I'm using the Sculpey Hollow Bead Making Dome. You can use a light bulb, you can use whatever it is that you are used to using, but you wanna take your piece here and you wanna put it over the large. If you're using this Sculpey Bead Maker, you wanna put it over the largest one and basically you want to shape it carefully you don't want those rings to come apart i mean you it's okay if they come apart a little bit as far as to shape it but you don't want to lose that sh circle shape and you don't want them to come apart and like fall off so you're just going to hold it into place until it sort of conforms to the shape of this while also keeping its shape into the circle that you cut out so, really important to try to preserve the shape as best you can so that you still have a nice circle. And it does take the, those circles, they do separate just a little bit, those uh, rows. And that's okay. You kind of almost want that to happen. You don't want there to be a gap to where you see through it but you, you kind of want that to happen so that it goes down. And then once you get it on there, you're going to take the mica powder again and you're just gonna go over it. You go through and you take the mica powder and you're gonna make sure especially that you have it in the grooves. That's where it's the most important but you're gonna just coat it over, make sure that you have it deep in those grooves. Because that's where the effect is gonna really show is where you have those grooves. So you want to really, really make sure that you have it in there. And you don't see any of the gray or any other color except for this blue green and then once you've done that and you, you're happy with that and I, it looks like I'm happy with that but regardless of that you're gonna put this in the oven for 20 minutes at the recommended temperature of your clay so let's do that and we'll be back while we were waiting, while we're waiting for that piece to come out, I thought I would share a couple things with you guys. First of all, the next step, you're going to need a mica shift sheet. So in the purple pearl. So if you want to prepare that, you only need a one inch, the one inch circle cut on your favorite portion of it. So you don't need a whole lot. You know, I made a little bit extra, more, more than I actually need with the, with the mica shift sheet, but that's what you're gonna need next. That's my dog growling, just ignore it. The other thing I wanted to show you is that with the little bail, what I like to do with the bail is I have the backing, okay, which I'll be talking about in a few minutes. And what I like to do with the bale is I take the bale because this bale has a very tiny loop 
in it. It's so tiny. And that's really hard to get that down in the clay. So what I like to do is take, this is a 22 gauge wire, just a piece of it bent. I don't know if you can see that. But I stick that through the loop like so. And then I go ahead and I twist it around the bottom of that loop so that it's secure. And then I put both pieces down straight like so. And I have a very flat, small piece of clay. It's very flat and very small. And I'm going to embed these, whether they weave in and out or whatever, I'm just going to embed them, the wires, into that clay piece so that it is stuck to it. And then I'm going to take on the end of them and bend them whichever direction I feel like bending them out or whatever. But it's nevertheless, it's a very thin piece of clay, but it's embedded, it's embedded into it. Then what I can do is on my piece, I can find where I want this bale to go. You don't want this clay to stick up above the piece but I can find where I want this bale to go, whoops, and press it there, and also press this clay flat right there. So the bale is in there and the bale is not coming out. This is so thin that you're not gonna be able to see that from the front. It's so thin that you cannot see that from the front. So then what I do is I can put that onto whatever piece I'm working with. So that's just a little tip for you. I will probably use this on my piece and it'll stay flat in the back. It'll stay really nice looking and that's just a little tip. So go ahead and get your mica shift ready and then we'll move on to the next step. I just wanted to give you that little tip while I was waiting on that clay. Okay, so once you get that out of the oven then you're going to want to let it cool and just remove it from the disc. And then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take, you're probably going to need some bacon bond, I would suggest would be the best thing to use for this next part. But go ahead and take your mica shift. And if you don't know how to do mica shift, I have a video in the link there that you can watch on how to do mica shift that'll tell you how to, how to do it. So you're going to want to take your purple pearl sheet of mica shift and what you're going to want to do is take your one inch cutter and find your favorite spot on here wherever it may be and just uh, cut that out and once you've done that you'll take your piece and you can put some, some bacon bond around the very rim of this if you wanted to, just like so. Just a very little bit. And what you're going to do is you're going to place this inside the window, we can make a window of your mica shift inside your, place it on the back, but inside the circle so that you can see it through the window. So basically once you have that in there, you're just going to, like I said, just lie it into your circle there with just a very tiny bit of the bacon bond on it so that it adheres. And once you get the resin on there, you're able to really see that mica shift. So that's what you're going to kind of aim for. Remember how I told you to uh, you're going to want to take and make sure that you have maybe a square piece of the graphite gray or the black mix with the silver and go ahead and put a pattern on our texture on the back of it and then you're going to want to take your two inch circle cutter and cut that out and I beveled it as well. I have a video on beveling if you don't know how to do that so it's got a nice rounded beveled edge. And basically, I showed you just a few moments ago how to put this bezel in there. 
and what you're going to do is you're going to place it onto the back of your piece and what you can do is you can gently put just a very tiny bead of this bacon bond around but I mean just a really tiny bead like it doesn't need to be really crazy just a little tiny bit and then you're going to adhere with your bezel at the top and I would say the most place you're going to need the bacon bun would be like up where you're going to put the bezel. And you could even put like a little bit right there just because you're going to want those two to come together really well right there. And you're going to place the bezel towards the top. And you don't want to press inward on this because you don't want this to be dented in. You don't want it to be dented inward. You want this to be flush. So you really want to be careful to make sure that it's going around the sides and it's it's flush. You don't want to press in in the center. So you kind of want to pull outward like I'm doing here. I'm kind of just pressing and pulling outward with the sides. And once you get a nice seal on that, you can either leave it like it is, beveled, and just smooth that around, which has a nice look on its own. It almost looks like it's got another row on the bottom of those rings or whatever. But I'm just kind of smoothing this around so you can you can take your blade and you can go around and you can even this out or you can leave it here because the next step would be to take some mica powder from the blue mica powder I want to make sure this is stretched out here the blue green mica powder and you're gonna go over this so that it matches the front. So we're going to go ahead and just lightly dust this back surface. And because it is beveled and reaching around to the front, I'm going to get the front surface as well so that it looks like it matches. And I'm just going to go ahead and lay it this way and I'm going to get around this front edge so that I'm evened up with the back. Because it really looks like it's part of the piece. Just looks like another ring at the bottom, kind of. And it's okay with this piece. Any other piece I'd probably cut it off, but this one I'm going to leave it on. It looks like it blends in very well. And then once we're finished with that, okay, we're going to put this back in the oven and we're going to go ahead and bake this for another 45 minutes on the recommended temperature. I'm just going to put it flat on its back. I'm not going to place it on anything that's going to cave in my backside. I'm just going to place it onto the card like that and allow it to bake. 
Okay, now once you get your piece out of the oven, I would say this part is the trickiest part. If you have a polyfast sander like I do, you're going to have discs like these, sanding discs like these that go on the end of it. Now, obviously, I've made this piece before, and basically this part, when I used my polyfast sander, even though I didn't want to go too deep with this, I actually did go too deep by the time I got to this grit. So the key is not to take too much off. So you kind of want to do it by hand for sure. So if you have some dry sanding papers or wet dry or whatever, you may want to do this by hand. And I don't recommend, I, wear, I recommend wearing a mask and doing this dry. But basically what you're going to do here, this is, these are the grits that I have. I have a 320 and 800, a thousand, a 3000, and a 10,000. So I know there, I'm not doing every single one, but basically all I want to do is lightly, very lightly, take a little bit of this green off, and I mean just a little bit of the teal off, to expose some of the gray underneath. And as you go through the grits, even though you're smoothing off some of what you just filed before, you're going to expose more of the gray and the, the charcoal and then you're going to find that when you're finished, you have exposed too much. The key thing is do not go into any of these grooved areas here. Make sure that the grooves stay teal. You don't want to expose any of the, the dark color in the grooves and this will produce a really nice effect. So what I'm doing here is I'm just barely grazing over this with this grit and then I'm going to go over it with the next grit and see how much that takes off because I found that the last time I did this, even though I was using the Polyfast Sander, which is going to be a lot stronger than this, as I worked through the grits, I was taking more and more of the mica powder off, and I wound up taking up off too much. And what I had to do to that piece to, obviously I couldn't add more mica powder onto it because it was already baked. So what I ended up doing to that piece was I went ahead and used some two-tone paint that I have and put some color back into to the grooved areas so that it could still have the effect it was supposed to have. So I'm going to go on to the next grit and like I said it's going to reveal even more of the of the gray. You don't have to get more aggressive with it or use, I'm sorry if I'm shaking the camera there, but you're just you're gonna naturally expose more even though you're softening up what you just did. You're gonna expose more of that gray which is why I'm saying don't take off too much. Really eyeball what you're doing and you can always go back and re-sand or take more off. It's a lot easier to do that than it is if you've removed it and there's nothing that you can do to get it back. So I'm going to go on to the next grit and again it's going to expose even more. You just want like a happy medium between how much you're going to expose versus how much you're going to leave as a mystery. And I'm going to move on to the next grit and see how that goes. And I may go back and re-sand this. I mean you can't really see uh, too much of what I've taken off, but like I said last time, I just want to make sure I'm directing you the right way so that you don't take uh, too much of that off because it really is a cool effect that you get from doing this. Really cool. If you do it right, and let me see here how it's... Yeah, I can see that it's got that nice effect. You can't really explain it. It's just something that you see when you turn it and when you when you turn the piece you see this light and, and lighting and darkening effect, dark, darkening effect. I don't know if you can see that, but it sort of like glows and then doesn't glow. And, and you can even do it from bottom to top. You see like it turning darker and then it becomes lighter. It's just a really neat effect. So you don't want to expose too much of the dark because it takes that effect away. This is just smoothing it now. You still see the, the mica powder on the thing. It's still removing some of the mica powder, so. And I'm gonna move on to the last one here. And I think this is more what we're going for than what happened to me last time. I may expose a little bit more, but this is kind of what you're left with. And ex compared, to my other piece, which is right here, 
this one, you know, when you once you put the resin on it, you're really going to see that difference. And I went ahead and I made two more. So you have this, I made uh, another two because there were some people that requested this and so I am making them one. So you see that cool effect where you see that blue green come out and it's just super shiny. And that's without the resin people. This one, it doesn't have it as well because it doesn't have that sanding on there. So you just want to take enough off. You don't want to take too much. That's key. And then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to resin the piece, okay? I'm just going to be using a UV resin. So I am able to show you this rather quickly. I couldn't get that off my table, by the way. That mica powder has just got a mind of its own. This is just a UV resin that my, one of my favorites, it cures in just moments. So I went ahead and resined this with the UV resin, the top of this after sanding it, and it really turned out really nice. So what I'm gonna do now is just put some resin on the back to seal in that mica powder. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I just put a little bit. Now, I, I mean, I don't want this thick on here. I mean, I could put it thick, but I don't want a real thick layer. I just want it to give it a little bit of a a shine. Well, it'll be quite a nice shine and to incorporate these this mica powdered area with a nice layer of this resin and I'll just set it into the light for 5 minutes and I'll be back. And we're just about finished here. Okay. Okay, and back from resining this, as you can see, it's got a really nice, let's see if I can bring that up to you a little bit. It's got a really beautiful shine on it. And then the front of the pendant is just turned out really, really sharp. So you can string this on your, usually I'm going to use this wire with the black coating over it and you just basically string it on there and you're done. And you have just this really cute pendant to wear and that is it. So if you like this video, if it's helped you, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. Like I said, we have more videos coming for you each time you turn around. We'll have another one, hopefully a better, even better video for you each time. So we hope you've enjoyed this and we hope you're having a great day and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.